Well, hello everyone. This is Amber with Story Chasing and I am here in Albuquerque, New Mexico right now. Have a little bit of a surprise coming up, but that will be probably in the next episode. But for now, I wanted to talk to you about what happened ever since I left the East Coast and I came back to the West Coast for the winter time. So uh, the last video that I put out was on the old Canada Highway in Maine. That was, I think, August of this last year in 2017. And uh, what you guys have been seeing was this last year when I went full time back in May of 2017. I did a lot of traveling. Um, I headed straight towards Maine and just really traveled that whole area and everything in between and I had so much video footage and I was working full time and trying to you know figure out RV life so um, I got really behind in submitting all of my videos and editing them and then um, putting them up on YouTube so that's what you guys have been seeing in order to catch everybody up to where I'm almost real time I decided to go ahead and put kind of a montage together of all of the video footage for the winter time and it was a little bit different, of course, in the East Coast. I stayed a little bit more in specific areas, like I was on Quartzsite for a long time, in Arizona and New Mexico and a little bit of California. So I just kind of stayed in that general Southwest area and didn't move around as much as I was when I was on the East Coast. So I took a little bit of time off to get myself together, get all my videos cut up, and also just work, 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 work. Um, so here we are now, it is the end of April 2018 and I am finally caught up. So the videos that you guys are going to be seeing will be almost real time, maybe two to three weeks behind. That's particularly for safety purposes, but you'll it'll be almost real time at that point. So in this video, you're going to see pretty much everything I did for the winter time. There'll be pictures, there'll be video. I went to a couple of escapers rallies and met some really amazing people that just really helped me to solidify like how to do things in RV life and I met people who were like me which was amazing because in my travels on the East Coast I hadn't met a ton of full-timers at that point and surprisingly I hadn't met any solo women who were traveling when I was out on the East Coast but that could be too because I was moving around a lot and um, just didn't come across them for some reason. So anyways, um, I hope you like this video and if you do, please give me a thumbs up, like, and share the videos as well. I finished up my summer months at Mark and Grant's house in the Catskills Mountains and then I headed to Charlestown, West Virginia to visit my sister and brother-in-law. It had been a while since I had seen them and so it was so amazing to hang out with them, catch a Navy game, and do some hiking. My brother-in-law also fixed my LP alarm by just replacing it and doing some better wiring. And that seemed to do the trick after all of these months with that alarm going off unexpectedly. Well, this is not the East Coast, as you can see. Or maybe not, but it is definitely not the East Coast. Uh, I had a little bit of a issue on the East Coast. Nothing bad, just needing to be back on the west coast and it was so hot out there and I just couldn't take it. It was middle of, let's see, September and it was still just really, really hot and um, I was in the kind of the DC area and I was visiting my sister and um, it was just, you know, it's too crowded and with this RV as big as it is, it's just hard in cities where it's um, very urban and, and a lot of people in smaller compact spaces. So I drove straight from West Virginia to Colorado so I could seek some cooler temperatures and get back onto land that was pretty plentiful and not so compact. So I actually, uh, I actually moved spots again from Salida, Colorado, and I didn't get much video because my batteries ran out and I, my memory card is full. So I'm over here in Alamosa on San Luis Wildlife Area in Colorado. It's really, really beautiful. It's already snowing in the mountains. Can see. 
see if I can get it on here. Right out here, you can see right here this line. That is the Great Sand Dunes National Park. So this is a very interesting park. Um, it used to be a state park and uh, from what I've read there was like some water testing and it came back that it just wasn't drinkable and the state shut it down. So what they did was they cut off all of the water but they left the electric on. They actually have a sewer dump area but there's no water for renting or anything like that but at least they have the sewer dump and they still have trash bins. Um, not at each campsite but uh, right by the the sewer dump area and then they have these little tables like picnic tables with the covers and a fire pit and you can see this is actually a pull through site it's huge so it starts from I'll show you it starts from here the pull through site starts from here there's my RV. And then we still have a little ways to go. You can see where it meets the road right there. Right there. So as you can see, these are very spacious sites. And it's you ready for this? Free. It's free. No uh, no cost. You have to move every 14 days, just like most BLM land. The only thing that's not free is you um, you do need a pass. It's an annual permit. It's $36 a year. You can pick it up from any place where you can buy um, a Colorado hunting and fishing license. And that's it. You just put it in your dashboard. Um, nobody's actually come around and checked that I've seen, but it says that um, on the rules on the website and on campandium.com and on the rules when you first come into the uh, park. So it's considered a wildlife area. Um, I haven't seen much wildlife except a couple of little tiny like garden snakes, a jackrabbit, some Canada geese, but yeah, just incredible views. Oh, look, you can even see the moon tonight. Just beautiful. So yeah, pretty amazing. I love it here. Uh, this is my second night here actually. Slept like a baby last night. It's so quiet and it's super dark outside. Um, but it is pretty amazing. Even though this spot was so beautiful here in Colorado, it was time to move on to visit my family in Texas. And I had a stopover in Fritch, Texas, which is in the Panhandle. We did a little bit of mooch docking over here in Argyle, Texas at my sister's house. Visited my nieces and nephews and my mom, got to celebrate some birthdays, and then it was time to move on towards the southwest side of the United States. I found a gem on Holloman Lake in New Mexico, which is actually on an Air Force base. If you don't mind the occasional helicopter buzzing by, this is a great location and very close to the White Sands National Monument. I'm over here on some, I guess it's considered BLM land, but it's part of the um, Holloman Air Force Base, and it's right off of Holloman Lake, and that's what you see in the background here. Um, but anyway, so Lily and I are headed over to the White Sands National Monument. It's only five minutes from this spot, so it's a great little spot. It's completely free. I did hear some gunfire this morning coming from the base, but other than that, it's been fairly quiet. Occasionally a helicopter will come through or a plane overhead, but uh, it's been very peaceful. I had a really great night's sleep, and uh, yeah, it's been good.
so we are here at the White Sands National Monument. This is the visitor center. So we're over here at the Interdunes Boardwalk. So this is really cool. They have this awning out here and a little place to get some education. What is in the sand? Like the different marks in the sand and what animal it is or insect. Through the fields of our pots, feelings not always keeping us close but it's strange now. Dreams holding us closer Meadows of our youth A hundred and seven days They're calling it backwards Our dreams holding us closer Ooh, we can see so clear This is just so amazing out here Yes, I'm holding the camera and driving at the same time, but it's only like 15 miles an hour, so that's not bad. But it is beautiful out here. Tons of white sand, people sledding, and the roads aren't bad. Um, there's an area, it's not paved anymore, and there's some little ruts, but those grooves that are like, I don't know what they call them, but your whole RV just shakes, but they don't last for very long. So I just slow down, but. The sand is cold. Okay, so this is a little odd. I took my shoes off to come out over here. So I jumped up over the little uh, kind of barrier and uh, the sand is really cool. It's not hot at all. It's really nice. It's kind of fun. I feel like a little kid out here. <laughs> Well, so I was gonna stay here at Lake Holloman again, but Lily is just not feeling well. Uh, about 10 days ago, I had to take her to the emergency vet when I was in Texas because she had some stomach issues going on. They said she had gastritis, um, but you know, she's eating well and she has normal bowel movements, but she keeps doing that praying position, which concerns me and she just doesn't seem herself today. She keeps stretching a lot, so I am driving to Albuquerque, New Mexico to um, her regular vet 
which is Banfield Pet Hospital. I have a nationwide wellness program with them. So um, I'm gonna have them do some x-rays. All of her blood work just the other day came back, or 10 days ago came back fine. But I don't know, something just doesn't seem right. So I'm gonna have them do some x-rays on her and make sure she's okay. Um, anyways, so we're headed to Albuquerque. I stayed at the Walmart last night over just west of Albuquerque. I was trying to find my campsite, but I was about 45 minutes to an hour late in getting there. The reason why I say that is because it was dark outside and the campsite was actually about 12 miles off of the main highway. So I really didn't want to try like finding a campsite in the middle of the night. So I decided to stay at a Walmart. However, I woke up this morning and it was 28 degrees outside and it was about 45, 48 in the RV. Uh, very, very cold. So prompted me to look at the temperatures again and just, you know, up north coming from Albuquerque West into Flagstaff, it's very, very cold at night. And, you know, I, those temperatures are, are too cold for me. And during the day, it's only getting up to maybe 50s and 60s. So I decided I probably need to drop an elevation. So the next best thing is Sedona, which is a five hour drive roughly. So I got up very early this morning and started driving. So that's where we're going. Lily's doing much better. She, you know, had a really tough time yesterday um, at the vets um, or before that. And so I took her to the vet and they basically just think that I think I changed her food up too quickly. So she had some issues with her GI tract. So we have her on a very bland diet right now and we'll see how that goes. So she's good. I'm very happy though. I was pretty worried about her. We did x-rays and everything and that all looked good. So at least we know she's good and, and it's just maybe an intestinal thing. So we'll hopefully get that cleared up here soon. All right, it's easy. After leaving Sedona, Arizona, I headed to Lake Havasu, Arizona for a little bit warmer temperatures and it was on my way to the annual Escapers Bash in Quartzsite, Arizona. So I stayed on some BLM land here in Lake Havasu and met some great people. It's such a gorgeous area with very colorful sunrises and sunsets. I also met another solo RVer and a French family on this BLM land who we all happened to be there together on Thanksgiving, and so we had an impromptu meal. It was truly a great life staying in all of these incredible places and meeting incredible people. I literally have no regrets at all in transitioning into this RV life. After leaving Lake Havasu, I just traveled south, not too far, to Quartzsite, Arizona, to kind of get set up before the annual bash and spend some time just really working and trying to get a lot of my work cranked out before it was time for the annual bash and the parties began. So I had a really great time. The temperatures were cooler, I had to wear gloves. I couldn't believe I had to bring out the winter gear, but I did. And the sunsets again are just incredible here. Well, good morning, everyone. I am here at the Escapers Bash 2018 out in Quartzsite, Arizona. We are on our day one here, and I'm actually headed out early this morning. It's about 7.15, and uh, there's a gentleman out here that's going to launch a hot air balloon. So I'm very, very excited. I've never been able to actually be this close to the action, so we'll see you in a bit. I'm at the 
over here. I love the colors of the balloon. Just by telling a little bit about kind of how we got started with RV life and how we got to this point really. I had a wonderful time at the annual bash for the escapers group and listening to a lot of the speakers and meeting new people so it was really wonderful. Then I headed out to Joshua Tree National Park and I wasn't actually able to stay there as all of the spots were taken up. I kind of went at the wrong time during the week. After living in the desert for so long during the winter, my skin was crawling just from being so dry. So I struck out at Joshua Tree National Park and found out that some friends of mine in the RV world were in Cambria, California. So I headed over there to the coast to get some moisture on my skin, soak up the sun, and hang out at the beach. It's now March and it was time to head back to the desert, but this time in Moab, Utah for another Escapers Convergence. I've never been to Moab before, but I had so much fun. The place is gorgeous and a must-see in your travel plans. I had so much fun hanging out with all my new friends from the last Escapers Bash. We did some off-roading and some jeeps, some sightseeing, and we even got snow one day. All I can say is, I cannot wait until our next convergence. What? 
How'd you get here? What? <laughs> she flew. When did you get here? <laughs> Where have you been? I didn't know you guys came. Yeah. I think I knew you came. You <laughs> this is there's gonna be a better one when we get to the top. We're about 30% of you right now. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing too. That that right up there, that point, that's called the anticline overlook. So if you go down towards Monticello. And there's a sign that goes to its needles overlook and oh, an anticline overlook. So I hope you enjoyed all of my winter travels and everything I did this last year for 2017. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button and make sure you click the notification bell somewhere over there, I think. <laughs> and if you could comment below, I like to see what everybody's questions in the community and we've had some really amazing questions and a lot of good interactions. Please go ahead and comment below. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.